Welcome back, we're here to talk about Saturday's Premier League match between Aston Villa and Swansea at Villa Park. Pascal will start with Villa, five defeats on the bounce now. Yeah, really, really struggling, aren't they? Down to 19th in the table now because obviously Newcastle had that big win against Norwich, so they went above them. And yeah, like you say, five defeats in a row, really, really poor form. And I don't, I mean, last time out, 2 0 defeat at Chelsea, I don't think many people would have expected them to get anything there, despite, you know, Chelsea did lose their last home game uh, against Southampton. So then that came before the international break, two week break. You expected Chelsea to come back and win that game. And. Certainly Villa, they weren't too bad and you wouldn't, say, you wouldn't say Chelsea were fantastic in any way but it was a classic sort of 2-0. They took advantage, They took their chance when they came, Chelsea. You know, the first goal, certainly Sherwood will be really annoyed about how that was scored. You know, a, a poor clearance from Guzan. I mean, he put Lescott under pressure with that. It was a, quite a firm pass to a centre-back who's then facing his goal and he obviously then miscontrols it. Chelsea go clear, squares to Costa, that's an easy finish. And then the second goal again, you know, whereas the first goal was a, a bad mistake on their part, very unlucky with that second goal, the way of deflection, you know, looped off Hutton. I think, you know, Costa was trying to square it and then he ended up going in the net. So that was unfortunate. But to be honest, Villa, you know, didn't really deserve anything out of that game. And yeah, five defeats in a row, they're really struggling. I do think there's some positives to take from that game. Chelsea in recent times have sometimes put four or five eight past them if I remember correctly once so there are some positives to take from that but as you say the form is just terrible no one in eight since the opening day they've lost seven of those so only one point since that mm. opening victory over Bournemouth and mm. you thought after that win over Bournemouth things might be looking might be looking a bit better for them because it was a tough place to go on the opening day but since then Sherwood just hasn't managed to get his troops going and he's the type of person who he, he said it himself in his um, post-match interview but if he's in a corner he'll come out swinging and he'll try and fight and he will fight till the end but Patience has got to be wearing thin with him because he just hasn't done it so far with Aston Villa. He's lost some key players. You've got to give him, um, you've got to say that for him. But down to 19th in this terrible form, they need to pick up some wins and they need to pick up some soon. As I say, some positives against Chelsea and there's nothing he could really do about either goals. It was just individual error and a piece <coughs> of bad luck. So it, the rub of the green isn't really going with Sherwood at the moment, but he does need to start getting results on the board. He certainly does, yeah. And I think most people seem to be of the ilk that um, you know Sherwood should be given more time. You know, he is the right man for the job. And I think when you just look at the Villa squad on paper, you'd say it's certainly one of the weakest in the league. You know, they did lose some key players, Delph and Benteke, in the summer. So I think certainly he should be given more time. But you know, the way they're going at the moment, all that bad form we just talked about, and you certainly think this game in particular, a home to Swansea, who are going to talk about really out of form themselves. This this really feels like a must-win game for them at home. They've had some poor home results this season. You know, they haven't won at Villa Park in the league this season yet. And you look at this game, then their upcoming fixtures in the league after this. So they go to Spurs. You know, have been playing well recently. Then City at home. Then Everton away in the next three league games after this. So you certainly feel that. This game at home to Swansea really is a must-win for them because, you know, if they don't win, it's hard to see when that next win will be coming. And it's quite an interesting subplot because Gary Monk's been linked with the Aston Villa job should show a go, and it's a bit of a strange one for me. If I was Gary Monk, I wouldn't leave Swansea for Aston Villa at the moment. Obviously, Villa historically they're a bigger club; they've won the European Cup in the past. But Swansea at the moment, much more exciting club. They look like they've got a brighter future. Having said that, their form is not good at all at the moment after that really good start to the season. No winning five in the league now, and last time out against Stoke at home fall into a 1-0 defeat it was a bit of a nothing game they hit that they did hit the post but other than that they didn't they never really looked like scoring there was no clear-cut chances say perhaps a bit unlucky with the penalty I think it's an increasingly contentious issue isn't it mm. what was Bojan clever or, or did he did he cheat by putting his leg across for me it's a bit of a, so, bit of a soft one because there's nothing Ashley Williams can do about that it's just I can see why people would say it's clever play by Bojan, but he's, he's sort of conned the referee for me. So I think they're a, a bit unfortunate with that, but still, they didn't do enough to get anything out of the game, really. And it's a complete different Swansea at the moment. We were praising them, rightly so, in August, but since then, they just haven't got going. Yeah, I certainly agree with you on the Bojan point there. I think the referee has to see that they were running you know, parallel to each other, side by side, and Williams didn't move across particularly. It was Bojan's leg that clearly came across, and... You know, if anything, that should probably make it a foul the other way because he's the one that's then obstructed Williams. And but he goes down, he he falls over, and in real time, it is hard to spot that. But certainly, yeah, it's, for me, it's not a penalty. And but for, like you say, from there, didn't deserve anything. And you know, you talked about that form in August. That's when Au and Gomez were playing so well. And Au continues to look bright in some parts, but Gomez, he had an absolute shocker on Monday night. Really, really poor. You know, even with his back to goal, he lost the ball. A couple of shots he tried from range were comically bad you know one he dragged wide the other he hit into you know Rose Ed really really poor and I certainly you know Gomez had that run sort of at the end of last season start of this season where he was scoring in all those games but I think over sort of a longer period you have to look at his overall form and how good a player he is for me he's not quite there I mean I think 
He's a good enough striker to play in the Premier League for sure, but I don't think he's certainly... If Swansea have sort of top seven aspirations, he's not a starting striker for a top uh, top seven side for me. And I think they might have to start... Unless he finds his form in soon, they might have to start thinking about you know, really reinvesting that Barney money. So they didn't really spend too much of it in the summer, did they? And I think in January, if they're still struggling for goals like they have been of late, I think they should really go in for another big striker because... It, that's, that certainly can make a difference. Then you look at the players around the Swansea strikers: Sigurdsson, Montero, you know, Au. They're all quality players, but I think they just need a, a striker up there who's got a bit more quality, not only scoring goals but his back to goal and linking play as well. Because I don't really see that from Gomez. So there's two sides in needs of a win. Swansea have won the last three meetings between the two teams. Which way do you see this one going? I, it's, a, it's a tough game to call, but I just Villa at the moment. I really, it's hard to see them getting a win to be honest. And I, I think Swansea would nick this one. I can't see it being a particularly entertaining game. Both these sides really struggling late, but I think Swansea might nick it one 0 Yeah, I agree with the Swansea victory. I can see them returning to a bit of form. You look on squad, uh, the squad on paper, and Swansea they've just got a better team at the moment. And Villa, the form they're in, as you say, you can't see them getting anything. I'm going to go for a two-one Swansea victory. So both going for one-goal victories for Swansea. Thanks for joining us.